Welcome back viewers, this is going to be a slightly odd video because it's going to be out of order, it's going to be uh, out of sequence. Um, the reason for that is because I want to start off with an apology because that last video, as some of you may have noticed, wasn't up to my usual standards. Now I'm not claiming I'm the best YouTuber around, I'm not, not particularly uh, adept at this, I'm new to it. Um, but clearly I have done better than that in the past. The reason, the main reason why that's happened was because I tried to do the vast majority of that video in just one t one long video which turned out to be a big mistake because it meant that I had a huge number of edits to bring in and it turns out that the YouTube editor having let me do all of them then tells me at the, right at the end that all of the uh, edits were too many and I had to cancel them and just get rid of the blank bits which is a real shame because it means that my video was a bit rubbish um, and I will hopefully be able to rectify that in the future and future videos will be split up into lots of, lots of videos before I put them onto YouTube in the first place so hopefully that will be the last time you see a video quite like that one um, but I just wanted to explain that before I got onto the video um, I'm actually now going to travel back in time to show you some news that has happened so far and then we'll go back forward to the start of the season um, and hopefully there will be some exciting news to come Hello viewers, I wasn't expecting to come back this soon, it's the 3rd of May, um, but there's something very exciting that's happened. Um, we're going to be moving stadium, um, and I hadn't realised this, but my uh, current stadium, Wright Robinson College, doesn't meet, meet North West County's Premier League division requirements. Um, so all the house has been rented. Um, I don't know, I've never heard of all the house, does, does anyone know of them? Oh, here we are. Uh, it looks like Ather Atherton Collieries have been playing there. Um, will we be sharing it with them? It would appear so. Unless they've moved to another place? No, it certainly appears that we will be sharing this ground with Atherton Collieries, which is interesting. I don't think I've ever had a ground share in these ge this game before. Um, but this is certainly an exciting and interesting development. Um, 2,500 supporters uh, capacity with a potential of uh, yeah, expansion potential of 5,000 but obviously uh, the latter is not really relevant to us given that we're renting um, next so next season that's where we'll be um, I don't know what the right right Robin College is yeah capacity only 500 so clearly that was a bit of a problem I didn't realize that otherwise I might have asked them for a, an expansion a little bit sooner uh, have we been filling it no not even close So, yeah, that was the game where we could have won. No, that, that's away. Yeah. So, I mean, we ha we've never been really re uh, been getting close to filling it. So it's not really a capacity thing as far as we're concerned, but as far as the league is concerned, clearly they would they want to make sure that we can have as many as possible. Hopefully, we will be able to start not necessarily filling it, but pushing those crowds up a little bit. Um, still no annual uh, youth set up to to speak of, of course. That's fair enough. Um, but that's a big, big step up in terms of uh, capacity, and obviously it will be a bit of a change, and it will be something for the players. I don't know whether players getting used to stadiums is, is a thing within FM. It may not be, and of course we're going to have a completely different sort of side anyway, so that rather negates that as a, as a factor for next season. But it's a big change, um, and one I wasn't really expecting. So yes, I will be back uh, a little bit later in the summer. This is not, as I say, when I was expecting to be back at all on the 3rd of May. I'll be back probably in August. Viewers, I must apologise. I forgot to record this bit. Uh, well, I, I was talking, but I'd switched my microphone off. Um, as you can see, some exciting news. I've got Luther Blissett in. I didn't even know he was still in football. I, part of me think, I, thought, I thought he might have even died. Um, so apologies, Luther. I didn't realise. Uh, but here he is. We've got him in as a coach. He's actually a very good coach for this level. Really good coach and should be uh, a really, really good influence on us. He's actually been a, the head of youth development, but I've got him in as a coach because uh, there's just so much that he can offer to my players here. Um, as you can see from this, I have I'm slightly reassigned my coaching. There's a slight issue here because my coaching, my personal coaching isn't very good because obviously I've, I've got no badges or anything like that. So I, I had to have a think, uh, you can see me here sort of thinking on the spot a little bit about what coaches, coaching I'm going to have where. Um, Luther Blissett, I yeah, by, by some distance the best coach I have um, and technical was clearly his biggest strength. I wanted to make sure that he wasn't too um, diluted in terms of his skills being spread out too thinly uh, and I'm just sort of as you can see fiddling around with it and trying to make it work in the best way possible as uh, you can see here uh, but to have that kind of um, caliber of coach in is really a big deal 
I've no idea whether having someone with such a big name will have a really big influence. I don't know whether FM kind of takes that into account. You feel like in real life that, you know, if a team like this got someone like Luther Blissett in, it would be, well, firstly, unrealistic, perhaps. But secondly, it would be a really big inspiration for them. Um, it's clearly not going to, well, I don't think it's going to have uh, so much of an effect in Football Manager. Um, but it's certainly something that I am quite pleased to have. And it's sort of it's nice to have such a, such a recognisable name into the club at such an early stage. It's the sort of thing I wouldn't really expect till later. Um, I still can't quite believe I managed to get Lee Hendry, who's a much smaller name, really. Um, so here we are. That's the uh, that's pretty much the end of uh, this little bit, which I didn't record. Um, as you can see, Luther Blissett comes in. It's a real improvement. So I'm really pleased with that. Hello, viewers, and welcome back to the East Manchester Experiment at the start of Season 3. Today is our first game in the North West Counties League Premier Division. Uh, I was actually going to uh, bring you my first ever game in the FA Cup, actually, as well, um, but the timing is probably not going to quite work out on that. I don't think I will be able to get the video edited in time to get it out tomorrow. Uh, I'm currently only one day uh, ahead of publishing day, which is not ideal. I was hoping to be a few days ahead by now. Um, but uh, that probably means that for the next few days I'm going to have to have some shorter videos. As you can see, there are a lot of new names here. Um, once again, just like last year, I've had a lot of my best players poached. You can see here some names that you'll remember from last year. Aspen Feathers, my top goal scorer. Uh, he has gone. Sam Joyce, gone. Jack Leask, probably our best player in our season, gone. There we are, you can see really reliable player, 11 assists, he once got 4 in a game as well. Um, Connor Taylor, no he wasn't one of the best but he's gone as well. Um, who else was there? Owen Gamble, best right back I had, gone. Uh, Declan Lehman, my goalkeeper, gone. Etc, etc. There are a few more as well but those I think are the main ones. I have got a few good players in though, um, including, and I have to say this one I'm really excited about, Wayne Cleaver. You can see he's 16 years old. I don't think I can remember having a 16-year-old in this team before. I've got him from Clean Slate. Um, clearly he, he regen there last year. He looks to me like quite something. At this level, you know, everything here looks fantastic. His determination is 15, so he's only going to get better. Um, God knows how long I'll be able to hold on to him for. I have got him on a two-year contract, which is unusual. I might even see it right now whether I can extend that. Contract offer... Already agreed enough. Yeah, I wanted to extend it. Okay, maybe it may well be. Ah, that's right. It's because he's he, because he's 16, he can't actually sign a new contract until his 17th birthday. That would be why. Okay, so fair enough. Um, which means, of course, that I can't extend it yet. You've got two years. Two years once that uh, hits. So you've got um, the two-year contract essentially now already. As soon as he does hit that age, I may well try and extend that a further year or two because I do think he looks like a real prospect and he's probably already my best defender. Um, so really, really impressive there. Um, who else have I been quite impressed with? Tim Akinola is probably the player that my assistants think is the best. He's certainly nice and well-rounded. No real weaknesses here for sure, but he also isn't anything special in any areas there really. Um, James Barrigan was there last year, but he has improved a significant amount. I do like his finishing and hopefully we'll be able to finish off some chances really well. Um, other than that, we are probably not... Well, we, I don't think this is as strong a side as it was last year. We're going back to Alex Pursehouse, who was with us last uh, the year before last, as our right back, and he's not really up to the, the quality I would need. You know, even in the previous division, he wasn't anything outstanding. He did quite well in the league in those five games that he played, but you can see last year he really struggled and got go out of the team early on in the season. Um, but there really isn't anyone else at the moment um, for that right back slot, uh, Wayne Cleaver, as you can see, though he can play right back, he's certainly more of a central defender, uh, and that is where I see him going forward. But at the moment, I've literally not really got anyone else at the, from uh, other than Perth House. If you look through, got someone like Abraham Bakari, central defender, not great defender either it, for either of them. Baxendale, who's also been at the club for a while, is no better. Um, so clearly, that's going to be an issue. So anyway, we are going to play today. Our first game in the North West Counties Premier League Division against uh, 1874 Northwich. We then have Wolverhampton Casuals in what will be my first ever game in the FA Cup, which is quite exciting. Uh, August 2020 will go down in uh, East Manchester history, um, but that will come tomorrow because at the moment we are going to focus on the league. 
So the team today is, as you can see, not a huge number of names that you will recognise. Ben Brown, of course, is back in. Um, I wanted to improve on him, to be honest, but I'm finding it quite hard to do. Um, I've got, I have got quite a lot of right wingers now, but he still seems to be probably the best. Uh, and he, to be fair, he had a very good end to the season last year, so hopefully he can continue that form into this year, uh, and things can improve. Just noticed that Finley Hayhurst needs rest. I might give him one. He's not necessarily massively better than the other players I've got in those positions anyway. So switch it with Jack Gurney. No, Jack Gurney can play there. So that is the team we have today. As you see, we've still got lots and lots of trialists. I'm still uh, searching far and wide for some improvements. Um, quite a few areas that I feel do need improving. Um, you can see from my um, squad view, you know, there's nothing here that's terrible, but there are things that I certainly feel like I could improve. Um, and with a bit more scouting, with a bit more time, hopefully, certainly the right back I want to improve, possibly the left back as well. Uh, and I'd certainly like to get at least one more centre-back, at least as cover, but possibly better than Craig Young, although Wayne Cleaver, as I've shown you before, is going to be something very, very special, I feel. So here we go, the first game in New Division for the, third, for the second year running, which is really, really exciting for me. It's for, as I said uh, at the end of the last episode, it's the first time I've had consecutive promotions, so it really is quite an exciting moment. Here we are with... Young and Cleaver have got two regens, our only two regens playing in partnership at centre back and Northwich uh, Spartan Stadium in Winsford. Um, you may remember from the last video we are moving to a new ground this year, so my next game will be the first, my first competitive game in a new stadium. A stadium which I believe we're still sharing with another local club, so that's obviously something that eventually we will need to uh, rectify. Nice long pitch at Northwich. And we're off. The start of a brand new season. Robles has the ball. Definitely not a striker I'm particularly wedded to and hope I will be able to improve on. Akinola's on the left. He's certainly a player I'm quite excited by. Persaz has it on the right. Over to Gurney. Can you find the ball? Deflected through to Horton. Over to Robles. Can he pass the ball into the middle? No. And another pass goes astray and Overton can take the ball away for Northwich. And Duggan looks like he might be through here. And he short scores. Very, very simple goal, really. Should be doing better than that. As you can see, Baker, really, really simple. First first ball through to Duggan. It's the first attack they've had, and they scored. Let's hope it's not a sign of things to come. It was close for the offside, but it doesn't look like it was to me. Let's ch change this over so that we can put our stats on it couple of their players obviously carrying slight knocks here which might play into our hands later on who knows and having said that we now have our own injury so Ben Brown injured luckily I have I've just noticed I've got two right wingers on the pit on the bench which is a bit silly because we could have had someone else that said I couldn't find a striker or a defender so <laughs> there wasn't a huge amount of options we have Josh Wicks who is I think the next best right winger Quite a few of my right wingers are pretty decent. Certainly holding our own here. Um, haven't really created a huge amount and a couple of silly mistakes have let them in. It looks to me like this might be another goal. Somehow we've managed to keep that out. Now we have the ball over in their half, so can we try and fashion something? Win that ball, win that ball, good. But it goes straight to the opposition again. We are slightly getting overrun in midfield here, I have to say. Uh, and Duggan is through for the second time, played through by a simple ball. Good save from Winterbottom. And that's half time. Um, it's certainly no disaster, but we haven't really created much. I want to try and give them a bit of a kick up the backside so that they can actually create something. We don't we need to actually start scoring some goals in this division. So we're off again. 
Right, and I think we're going to need to make a substitution. Robles is really not up to it. What I'm going to have to do, I think, is switch to uh, having an extra midfielder, because simply because we don't have any other strikers on the bench at the moment, uh, which means that we need to move Ryan Bell. It does mean we're going more defensive, but I wonder whether maybe if we could push it to more attacking as a mentality, then having that extra cover might just give us the the um, the impetus to push forward and knowing that we've got Bell there covering, possibly try and grab a goal. It's a corner here from Northwich. Ball comes in and it's cleared away. Can we go and get to it? No. Baldwin out to Hammerston on the right. Try to put a cross in. Yes, he can. And Cleaver gets there, but gets back to him. And Young kicks ball out of play. Cleaver probably should have done that to begin with, to be honest. But debut for a 16-year-old. I'm not going to be too hard on him. Hopefully, and certainly defensively, we haven't looked so bad in the second half. We've been a bit more um, emphatic. Haven't allowed them to play in behind us quite so easily. And maybe we can hold out and get that draw. But Skeet puts the ball through to Overton again. It's third or fourth time this has happened and it's going to be another s is it a save? Yes, another save from Winterbottom. He's actually had a good game very quietly. Um, I think it's his debut. Could be wrong about that. Um, but certainly he hasn't played much and he's done well today. really going for it in these last five minutes. Hopefully we might be able to nick a goal, which would be a fantastic point on the first day of a new season in a new league. But Duggan is through again. This is a number of times that they've come, gone through from really easy long balls. Luckily they haven't finished as well as they might have done. A combination of that and a really good goalkeeper performance has kept this respectable, otherwise we could have been thrashed here. Winterbottom the only player with a, t a rating of a 7 as you can see. But it does look like it won't be enough. We are not going to get anything out of this game. There's not enough time. Disappointing attacking wise, I think actually defensively I'm quite pleased. Um, we didn't completely disgrace ourselves. A little bit of a problem with the um, the long balls through the back. I might have to play a slightly lower line uh, in future games. Uh, it's certainly no disaster, but we're going to have to do something about our attacking play. I'm going to have to sign a few more players, I believe. Uh, you know, we had two shots all game, despite having 57% of possession, none of them on target, no clear cut chances. That's a real problem, um, and it's going to cost us simple as that but as I say we didn't get thrashed it could be worse we need to we certainly need to create more um, I'm gonna say unlucky because we were a bit unlucky um, that's not true actually I just told a lie we weren't unlucky at all we were extremely lucky um, but uh, yeah what can you say to your players eh? you're not gonna tell them it's rubbish on the first day in a new league that's not doesn't seem very fair and now Ben Brown's out with crucial ligaments. Well, that means that we need to find a new winger. Um, it makes my decision much easier, to be honest. Uh, that is almost certainly the end of his career for us. Craig Young made a debut. Jazz Casey could replace Brown. Goodness me, yes, he could. could but there's no way we're going to be able to get him. Just absolutely no way. It's not going to happen. I don't know why, they, I mean he's listed for loan, I guess we might be able to get him on loan. Right, okay, so Telford are happy to have a, ha let us have him on loan, but the question then becomes, is Casey going to be interested? Um, we will find out, I'm going to keep on the video until then. Uh, all these players you see here, the transfer interest is extremely doubtful, I'm getting a lot of these scout reports at the moment, because I've um, been looking for pl players who've been released by bigger clubs, they, they're nowhere near interested at the moment, later in the season they may be just quite quickly find out whether we can get that guy on loan or not certainly something we would be able to use and actually
actually Ben Winterbottom, as you can see, despite that defeat, he managed to get himself named in the team of the week, which is pretty impressive in a defeat, really. Uh, it does show just how impressive he was as a keeper on his debut there. Was it, was it his debut? I didn't need to check. Yes, I think it was. He was here last season, but he didn't actually play. He played for our under-23s, as you can see, he did very well. In terms of 15 goals conceded in 27 games and an average rating of only 6.87. 15 clean sheets in 27 games. That's that's broken. Fix it. If I fix that, that is uh, SI. Please fix that. That's just silly. You can't have a, a keeper doing that well and getting an average rating under seven. That's ridiculous. Sadly, Casey, it looks like I have some um, competition here, uh, and Corinthian catchers are significantly above us, so I think that's probably the end of any chance I have of getting him. I'm just going to show you a quick uh, list of players I have been looking at. I had more than this, uh, but these are all players who were released by clubs nearby me. I've, I've heard from elsewhere that at this level this is something that might be quite helpful. I think we may be a bit too far down the, the ladder at the moment, um, but because uh, there were quite a lot more than this, and they've all gone now. All, the, all of these players would improve me for without a doubt. Um, at the moment, none of them are interested, not even close. I'm hoping that maybe one or two of them, this one might be a possibility, um, could become interested if they don't find clubs fairly soon. Um, but at the moment, none of them are interested whatsoever. I can just change this to... If I always change this to... Sorry. Uh, to doubtful. Oh, there is one person who might just be able to get Jude Swales. He's not the best of them. Still, I did speak to him before, of course. Uh, I couldn't afford him. He just wasn't interested at the the amount of, with the the maximum amount that I could give him. He still wasn't interested, so that's not something that's available to us yet. But as I say, later in the season, it's just possible that some of these players might decide. Well, I can't find a club, so maybe East Manchester might not be such a bad idea. Um, I'm still waiting on a couple of players. If we get to the next game before they um, get sorted, then I may have to come back to you on the, the, for the next game for that. I will come back for the FA Cup prelim extra preliminary round. Again, it will be quite a short episode, um, just because I want to get a few out, um, and they will lengthen again. Uh, so please bear with me over the next few days. Uh, but over the next few days, I will hopefully build up a few in, in advance, which means that they can get a little bit longer and I can spend a little bit more time editing them. Uh, the editing is what's taking a long time at the moment, particularly when I'm, get, I'm having multiple games cutting between them and that's taking quite a long time to get that right. So yeah, here we are. The game is against Kirby, Kirby Muxlow. We're not going to see this game. Um, I'm not really expecting to win the game anyway. Um, although they did lose their last game, and I'm interestingly favourites with this one, which is which is unusual. Um, but as I said before, the editing is just going to become too difficult if I get this one in as, as well. So um, I will see you for the FA Cup game um, tomorrow at three o'clock. Please join me then, and I hope you're enjoying the East Manchester experiment. If you'd like to contribute, please do in, down in the comments. I will really appreciate some feedback. Um, let me know what you think of my team. What could I do to improve it? Is there anything perhaps about my tactics that could improve? It's very, very basic at the moment. Um, I've got um, a few ideas about things that I could perhaps change in the, in the near future, mainly to do with the roles for these players, whether perhaps sometimes my wingers, particularly now we're perhaps struggling a bit more in the league, like if I can make them into defensive wingers, it might perhaps give us a bit more um, cover down the back because clearly we were getting, uh, the balls around the back were getting p particularly um, leaving us exposed. So hopefully... That can be improved over the next few weeks. I will be back for the cup game, the first ever FA Cup game against Wolverhampton Casuals. So please join me then at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Thanks. Goodbye.